Welcome everybody and thank you for being here today. This is the Fields Institute of Mathematics Blockchain uh, Research Seminar Series. It's, it's a seminar that started three years ago. This is the fourth year that we're running it. Um, and the purpose of this seminar is to address and pretty much promote research challenges in the field of blockchain and distributed ledger technology. Uh, it's not a seminar that we're here to promote products. It's not a seminar that we're here to do pitches about what we do. It's something to promote organic research and stimulating research in this very, very fast evolving uh, field of blockchain technology that has taken everybody by storm. Uh, this seminar in the past have hosted people like Vitalik Buterin, Silvio Micali from MIT, Emin Kutsir from uh, I mean, consider from uh, Cornell University, Daryl Duffy from Stanford University. Usually we have four installments of this seminar every year. Um, it was a great seminar when it was in person uh, and it's still a great seminar, it's virtual, but when it was in person, we had also a very warm networking event. After the talk, people were gathering together uh, with food and drinks and talk to each other. Unfortunately, obviously, in the days of COVID, uh, we're not allowed to have this uh, kind of in-person uh, facility. Uh, this year is going to run again virtually, uh, but uh, we still thank everybody, the audience, for their warm, warm welcome that they keep it alive and they make it, a, for the fourth year, a very, very interesting event. Uh, now, today, we're very honored to have uh, Dr. Tong, uh, Dr. Wen Tong from Huawei Wireless here in Canada, uh, to talk to us about 6G uh, and how this integrates with blockchain in the world of machine learning, in the world that all this data is going to be, as he very well said, is going to be produced by all those devices and what uh, where blockchain fits into that picture uh, to be able to uh, provide transparency and security for the user and uh, be able to... Uh, essentially promote a very healthy ecosystem like people and this is an area uh, as people who know I work in the area of uh, settled back digital currencies uh, I have a friend who, who used to work for the for uh, the government uh, south the border and he says and I'm sure Dr. Tong is going to agree that data is the new oil um, and people fail to understand that uh, during the 20th century uh, a lot of blood and a lot of wars was because of oil. Well, this new oil today is data and people fail to understand when they pick their phone, when they uh, essentially uh, give the data for free. Uh, so it will be very interesting now how in the world of 5G and beyond, in particular 6G, uh, this applies. Uh, Wen Tong is a fellow of IEEE who received his bachelor's from uh, the Department of Radio Engineering in Nanjing Univers uh, Institute of Technology in China, and his master's and PhD uh, degrees from Concordia University in Montreal in 1986 and 1993. He's a Huawei Fellow and also the CTO of Huawei Wireless. Uh, he's the head also of Huawei Wireless Research. In 2011, he was appointed as the head of the Communications Technology Labs in Huawei, and he currently spearheads and leads Huawei 5G wireless technologies and beyond uh, research and development. Also, the Huawei has uh, quite a bit of an investment in the area of blockchain technology. We hope to hear, hopefully, some of this work. Uh, he has pioneered fundamental technologies for the last uh, 20 plus years from 1G to 5G and today 6G. And he holds more than 400 US patents more than 400 U.S. patents under his belt. Uh, he's a recipient of the IEEE Communication Society Industry Innovation Award for his leadership and contribution to the development of 3 and 4G wireless systems in 2014, and the IEEE Communication Society Distinguished Industry Leader Award for pioneer technical contributions and leadership in the mobile communication industry and innovation in 5G mobile community. Uh, technology in 2018. And he's also a fellow of the Canadian Academy of Engineering. And he serves also as a, a, the board of directors of the Wi-Fi Alliance. So thank you, uh, Dr. Tom, for being here today. Uh, we're looking forward to your presentation.
Usually presentations are anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes and they're followed by a Q&A by the audience. And the audience also uh, in the interim, ideally we don't want to interrupt our, our speaker. Uh, there's a chat that you can write your questions at the very end of the talk, I will moderate and, and, and put those questions. And I look forward to your the participation of the audience as well. Thank you so very much for being here today again. Thank you. Uh, let me share my slides here. I'm not sure. Uh, a second. Can you see the chart? We can see, yeah, it's, it's okay. very good right now, thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to share our views on 6G blockchain at Fields Institute Blockchain uh, Research Seminar Series. Thank you for the invitation, Andrea. Uh, blockchain technology had a phenomenal success and it enabled and created the Bitcoin and the Ethereum uh, cryptocurrency innovation. However, in this talk, I would like to present how to apply blockchain to the wireless network and what are the related technology challenges. The title of my talk is a 6G uh, blockchain. And it is a joint work uh, with my colleague, Robert Son at our Canadian Research Center. Uh, sorry. As we all know, every 10 years, the wireless technology will go through a revolution. And uh, every 10 years, we create uh, one generation of a wireless. So 1G and 2G wireless started with a voice communication. 3G and 4G wireless make every people to use smartphone to access internet to, for their work and daily life. 5G start to connect everything and enable the internet of things and the digital transformation for uh, every vertical business. Almost all wireless service and application are delivered through uh, the operators and the service providers. For the service integrity from the uh, service quality to security, we trust the operators and therefore security and the privacy is ensured. Today, uh, 6G is becoming a hotspot for the wireless community. However, 6G is not just a simple uh, upgrade of 5G. 6G is not a, a simple bit pipe. Uh, 6G wireless will go far beyond communications. So in that sense, 6G is a foundational platform uh, to shape every aspect, let me say, of our life in the new decade. Uh, in this regard, 6G will be defined by these six uh, elements or the pillars. The first is a native AI, which means 6G network will natively integrate communication, computing, and sensing capabilities. A Distributed machine learning architecture will be the key to deliver the AI service and application to anywhere at any time. And furthermore, um, I, I will also think and claim 6G will revolutionize AI. So the second element is the new thing that called a network sensing. So 6G communication system will integrate wireless sensing capability to explore the physical world, meaning by using the radio wave echo reflection and scattering 
it can provide high resolution sensing, localization, you mean the position, and the imaging, and even the reconstruct the physical world capability to improve the communication. More than that, it can open up and support a, lot, a big range of uh, network service, especially the complementary to the AI. The third is uh, extreme connectivity. That 60 will provide the universal high uh, performance wireless connections and the, the ultimate experience with the speed comparable to fiber optics. Number four, 6G will integrate terrestrial and non-terrestrial uh, networks. In a nutshell, 6G will integrate with a satellite and the cellular network to cover the wireless service to everywhere in the earth. Uh, number fifth is the native trustworthiness. So the trust is a six, in 6G is the topic we will address at this talk. And the last is the sustainability and the humanity good uh, to achieve the carbon zero uh, and to ensure the computing and the communication of a 6G is green. And in particular, include the reduced power consumption for the 6G blockchain. So in, a, in, a, in this picture, uh, the vision for 6G is a connected intelligence. For our technical community, the, this pic, uh, chart represents some key performance indicators for the 6G. Uh, the peak speed, you can remember, is about one terabits per second. The user data rate is about 10 to 100 gigabits per second. And the latency, that the communication latency is 0.5 millisecond. And that the number of a connection per square kilometer will reach 10 millions. That, that is very rich in, in terms of a sensor networks. This target is a really technology uh, challenge and it's also uh, we reach the supremacy of a wireless technology, which means uh, it is ultimate capability we can re uh, achieve. Uh, to to reach this target or achieve this target, we need to invent the new enabling technologies. And for the academia, this is a really challenging. Uh, technology challenging topics for the for the next 10 years. Now let's get into the trustworthiness and aspect that is the topic we're talking today is a 6G blockchain. Uh, the ambition for the 6G is to connect everything and yet to make everything intelligence. But to deliver AI service and application uh, in this case, a huge amount of device will connect to such a platform and even more, most of these service requires a very low latency. So for the enhanced mobile broadband service, that is the EMBB, we will have a six billion smartphones. And for the ultra low latency service, that is, uh, you know, in the in the second column that the URL C, we will have a two billion uh, of a cars, autonomous driving cars and robots, with even tough latency, which is one millisecond. Uh, for the uh, uh, machine type of a communication, massive machine type of communication there is about one trailing sensors will be connected to the network. The latency is about uh, uh, less than 10 seconds, some of them. So our goal is to put all this device on the blockchain to ensure the trustworthiness and the privacy. And we will have a huge challenge of a scalability because the Nakamoto system 
uh, as we know today, simply will not scale. Uh, for example, for 300 million use of the uh, crypto ledger, uh, Bitcoin can make seven transactions, that's a rough estimation uh, per second, and it takes hours uh, to verify and confirm. The new challenge of a 6G blockchain, uh, uh, the next challenge is the GDPR regulation. That is the general data protection regulation. Because of limitation of the data access for the future data governance regulation and the heated geopolitics aspect, a single implementation of uh, the global blockchain were not feasible uh, for this type of 6G type of uh, telecom applications. Um, before uh, we present 6G uh, blockchain, let us clarify the trust relationship of what for the wireless service as we do today. This is a fundamental model for telecom business. It is a centralized model. Here, Alice and Bob are all trust authority, the service provider or the operator, like Bell, Tellers, and Rogers. Therefore, Alice trusts Bob and Bob trusts Alice. Or in the other case, Alice trusts the third party and the third party endorses the Bob, therefore Alice trusts Bob. So these are the today's model, very centralized and all are controlled by the, uh, the authority. The model can be further generalized into the consortium based trust model based on the commercial contract of a service level agreement. Uh, this is a, a membership based club model. In this case, because Bell Tellers Rogers, the network equipment providers, the enterprise like Walmart and the, the vertical like a bank, they are all uh, in the consortium with the same service level of uh, agreement uh, contract. And this is a permission uh, based model. Uh, all consumer subscriber, uh, subscribers are therefore mutual, mutually trusted. However, for the sixth service, we will introduce some non-authority consensus based distributed not centralized model. Although it is a, a, a still, uh, it's a permission based. Here, no one have the authority power and a consensus driven mechanics will ensure the multilateral uh, mutual trust. Regarding to the 6G network architecture, uh, this is a, what the picture in our mind for every device will be on the blockchain uh, uh, enabled. In this case, the user data transaction activity, activity will put on the ledger and every signal protocol transaction will be put on the ledger. Even the network operation and the maintains, maintenance transaction and related to the data will be put on the ledger. So the goal is that we can prove the security and the ledger is the basis for the trust. Every wrongdoing on the network or more function on the network is a traceable. In addition, uh, we want to ensure the privacy uh, of the transaction as well. With a, such a scale of a device and the speed of a transaction, how to design blockchain structure and the algorithm so that we can make 6G blockchain practical. Uh, the blockchain throughput, latency and the computing complexity and the ledger memory 
performance are all the critical uh, design fa uh, factor. Here is the 6G blockchain design principle. So, so 6G blockchain is inherently built up on, on the principle of a decentralized multilateral model. And 6G blockchain technology can achieve a strong authentic, uh, authentic, uh, authenticity, integrity, protection, uh, which means this Byzantine fault tolerance consensus. It has the proof of work uh, capability. In addition, we want to add proof of a trust uh, capability. This is part of our talk. And it will maintain autonomous communication, anonymous communication uh, to achieve a privacy protection. And it uh, uh, all the attacks will be transparent, especially uh, they can be traced in the ledger. Uh, with our uh, proposed uh, trust of uh, uh, proof of a trust uh, uh, model, the attacks can be identified and alarmed uh, on the through the network. Uh, 6G blockchain can take advantage of a, a gossip protocol to effectively broadcast the information and reach the age of a 6G network. This can avoid a single point of failure. And uh, the 6G uh, blockchain can coexist with a centralized 6G network architecture as well in many uh, usage scenarios. To give you an idea, uh, of the scalability issue for 6G blockchain. We take a case of current running 4G network in Germany. Uh, here we have uh, three operators. Operator A has a three, uh, 30 million subscribers. Operator B has 26 million subscribers. And uh, operator C has uh, 23 million subscribers. They are for EMBB smartphone service. We perform uh, the network wide simulation. Here, we assume the network has concurrent 3,000 smartphone transactions per second. On average, each user transaction rate is uh, uh, 0 0.0001 per, per second. Uh, so, in this uh, very typical today uh, 4G type of service. We can see from the left plot, we run the distributed hash table function and the distributed ledger for both data access time and the latency. They are linearly proportioned to the package size. Uh, for the middle plot, the CPU usage time and the blockchain running uh, time uh, are linearly proportional to the number of uh, active uh, users. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, this is a good news in the sense that we need a design, a linear speed, a linear acceleration of a 6G blockchain for, uh, for our design. Uh, for the right-hand side plot, the CPU usage and the runtime uh, for the uh, user authentication uh, is linear proportional to the number of active user as well. So one of the topic talk I uh, topic I will talk later is uh, is uh, the uh, privacy uh, communication in terms of authentication. Uh, so to get into detail to cope with, to deal with the scalability problem of the 6G blockchain, there are actually several tools available. For example, uh, the PRISM algorithm uh, and the shading algorithm. The key is to arrange many groups of uh, voters to perform the parallel voting. Uh, therefore, the, to speed up validation process and to increase the blockchain throughput and reduce the latency. In 6G blockchain design, 
there are many ways to do this. We can arrange a group based on the type of a 6G service. For example, we can categorize the EMBB service for smartphone, uh, the URL service for the autonomous driving car, or the MMTC service for the sensors. Uh, in another way, we can also arrange the group based on the network functions. We can categorize the group of core networks functions, the access RAN functions, or the uh, operation and management functions. On the other hand, uh, such group can be further arranged based on the geographic of uh, countries or regions uh, the ta to tailor into, uh, for example, the G GDPR regulations. Uh, this design allows, uh, especially the asynchronous uh, uh, prism, uh, to uh, mitigate the scalability problem uh, and maximize the blockchain throughput. And even further, the 6G blockchain can adopt the sharding algorithm to reduce the computing effort and to reduce the latency for certain usage scenarios because the different security uh, level of a requirement and the computing requirement or the power consumption uh, uh, constraints for the device such as a sensor and at here we can use the random interleaving uh, uh, of a selected subset of uh, voters for different group of uh, voters. The implementation uh, of a prism and sharding algorithm is the engineering problem for 6G blockchain because uh, the basic blockchain operation is a transaction based and the design of a 6G blockchain uh, for the data plan and the control plan may be different, uh, uh, maybe have a different performance requirement in terms of a computing and uh, computing speed and the storage size for the ledger. Uh, in the next topic, uh, I would like to give a, a deep dive on the new uh, private de privacy design for the uh, 6G blockchain. F for the Nakamoto uh, blockchain system, the transaction parties are all anonymous. However, the content of a transaction is a plain text. For 6G blockchain, we will need to protect the trans uh, transaction privacy as well. Uh, therefore, we need a, a fast and a low cost algorithm to achieve the native privacy computing. So we present, we, here we show a new construction of a privacy uh, preserving online verification system for uh, 6G blockchain. The technique we adopt here is a zero knowledge based obvious transfer. The new construct uh, should have a, a much less overhead and also practical to implement than the solution we know uh, as we, uh, today like a ZK snack in both communication cost and uh, uh, overhead and the computing overhead. The new scheme uh, used the full syntax verification and which allows the policy verification. Uh, the implementation of this construction uh, with the improve, uh, we improve the garbage circuits, such as the, the, this algorithm uh, have, have the following property I, I listed here. So first of all, no pre-test setup is required. Second, is the proof of uh, proof of generation uh, generation time and the size is linear to the input. The third is a full syntax verification to accomplish uh, 
uh, more comprehensive ta tasks. And the integrity is ensured with a proof of a security. And it, it is not now interactive. The total privacy preservation is built on the full homo, uh, uh, homographic encryption uh, engine. Uh, the uh, ZK uh, snack means zero knowledge sustained uh, non-interactive argument knowledge algorithm. Uh, ZK snack uh, provide means of privacy protection with a dynamic computing uh, through uh, the full uh, homographic encryption uh, computing. Mathematically, we, we have to compute elliptical so, uh, curves to construct a bilinear map of uh, a cyclic group. And the verification of a homographic computing of the polynomial uh, order uh, D at that complexity level. The trust setup for the conventional uh, ZK snack is expensive. For example, uh, the trusted uh, the trust setup needs a proof of size can be very large if the input are large. They are at an order of a two to the power n log n uh, um, level. Second is the prover and the verifier need a longer time to generate uh, the quadratic arithmetic programs. The third is uh, the initial setup require a set of uh, complex parameters. Number four uh, is the circuit has a significant overhead. Uh, number five, the verification is uh, monosotic. Uh, the last is uh, the single verify provides limited syntax verification. Uh, so our idea uh, here we call it is a ZK fabric uh, for the better name. Uh, compared to the ZK snack, the ZK fabric has the uh, disadvantage. For example, the input parameter size are linear to the input. The circuits is, a, uh, is the simplest Boolean gates operation. Uh, there are no interactions between the providers and uh, uh, the provers and uh, uh, the verifiers. It is used non-interactive, uh, obvious, oblivious uh, transfer. It, it is a polycytic syntax verification. So for the ZK fabric scheme, uh, we propose uh, to use polycytic syntax joint verification. Uh, for this scheme, the over, overall concept is like this. Alice want to get her state, secret statement S to be verified anonymously without revealing the secrets. So Alice will decompose the uh, statement S into a Turing complete boarding uh, circuits uh, with, the, uh, with the algorithm we propose. And the blockchain host uh, in the public accessible ledger and the verifier can anonymously verify Alice's statement jointly without knowing the Alice secrets. Uh, so uh, for our ZK fabric scheme, we have uh, the, uh, this advantage like proof of our security, now into uh, active privacy uh, preserving. This is the key we want. And the simple, and it's a simple and faster than the ZK snack. For uh, the ZK uh, fabric scheme, uh, we show in this chart, there are several fabrics in this system. The first module is the compute 
uh, of the polycytic syntax decomposition. The second module is to generate the gobble circuits. Then the gobble circuits are posted on the blockchain. And the third module is to perform multi-party uh, participated non-interactive uh, interactive oblivious uh, transfer. Uh, so the object for Alice is to get the statement S to be verified anonymously. Uh, for the first module, uh, the, to perform the polycytic syntax decomposition. In the step one, Alice will decompose the statement S into a Turing complete Boolean circuits and a new polycytic syntax decomposition uh, algorithm as shown in this, uh, in this chart in the red part, uh, just uh, uh, indicative. However, the detailed algorithm uh, of a polycytic syntax decomposition is here. So for the statement S, we convert it to the vector M and then uh, hash the vector M into vector S, uh, X. After this, we construct the Boolean relationship function F with the X, reduce the F uh, by using the, uh, the kernel map. Uh, and the next step is to generate the Gabo circuits with the polycytic syntax decomposition, we are able to offline to construct uh, the tapped uh, gobble circuits. After the gobble circuits generation, uh, we post the gobble circuits uh, onto the uh, conventional uh, distributed blockchain in the public domain. Um, this is an illustration of an example from polycytic syntax to generate the gobble circuits and the partition into many uh, tapped circuits. Here we list the algorithm of a gobble circuits generation. Uh, as we mentioned before, map the vector X onto gobble circuits and using Yao's algorithm uh, to repeat the process until all the elements in F and X are mapped onto Yao's gobble circuits. And then we generate the circuits of Y, uh, C contains a C1, C2, C and CP. Uh, verify if Y equal to V here, is V is an expected uh, value. Um, now we can post the circuits on the distributed ledger uh, uh, table with a couple of circuits, uh, true tables. Here we show the obvious uh, videos uh, transfer based on the non-interactive multi-party verification. So the verifiers on the blockchain, uh, like Bob and David and Charlie, can access the tap the gobble circuits, and then they can use offline multi-party oblivious transfer scheme to obtain to get the verification result. And finally, then they combine all the result uh, and it will be post and posted it on the blockchain. So the core part of the, uh, the ZK fabric I talked before, uh, we show uh, the relationship of a non-interactive multi-party uh, gobble circuits of various transform uh, protocol. Overall, uh, we can show that the computation and the communication overhead is uh, minimized with this uh, ZK fabric. Uh, here is a, a various transfer aggregator protocol. David X, uh, X at the aggregator to post the verification result. It is a very simple and straightforward. Uh, so ZK fabric scheme uh, we will need the N plus one verifiers. And the fact, uh, the more verifiers, uh, the better. Uh, to put all protocol stack together, uh, we have this picture and the left block is related to generation of a gobble circuits. The right block is uh, related to verification and uh, of various transfer. 
Um, uh, this is the overall schema for the uh, ZK fabric. Uh, to summarize, uh, so the zero knowledge snack is a is a is an uh, arithmetic circuits based on zero knowledge proof of system, uh, which uh, can provide the uh, privacy preservation of a monocytic input. The the garbage circuits technique of a security function encryption was introduced by Andrew Yaw in 1986. And in, 19, in 2002, a bunch of people, Linda and the Pinkas, gave the formal proof of a security in the sense of a semi-honest model. Our construction is reuse Yaw's Gabo circuits. Our construction rely on also rely on uh, the recent work of uh, Belia, Hong, and uh, Rogaway in 2012. They proposed the Gabo circuits technology that allow evaluation of uh, XOR gates for free. And uh, it, that is with no communication and the negligible computing cost. So this is a, a, a bigger step. So in 2008, uh, Kosnikov, uh, Sato, and Schneider improved the circuit's construction for uh, the multiplier, um, uh, multiplexer, and in addition, uh, and the inequality testing. So our main contribution is to further improve their proposal to improve the subtraction and the compare, uh, comparison by a factor of a two. So the first uh, uh, se uh, secure uh, two-party comparison protocol are uh, also uh, in Yaw's paper in two, uh, 1982. And we show that the Gabo circuit is the most efficient solution uh, to this problem. Uh, and further, and the, uh, and the, our solution uh, for compare k bits number reuse the 16 k bits offline communication and the 3 k bits online communication, and the k is uh, is the symmetric key uh, parameter, and it's a length of a, a symmetric key. So, uh, in uh, the not. Uh, I, uh, so to finish that uh, uh, ZK fabric uh, for the privacy uh, in on the 6G blockchain because of the re privacy requirement. Now I shift to uh, gear uh, to the trust aspect of a 6G blockchain. Uh, this is a how to use 6G blockchain to construct the trustworthiness. Uh, in general sense, the mistrust come from uh, uh, the these are uh, road costs. For example, the distrust that is based on the some sort of evidence for misinformation, or the disconnect that is uh, based on the popular segment or uh, or or sandbox design principle. Uh, the isolated people can cause the suspicious. Uh, then the discord uh, that is based on the contradictory of information and create confusion. So these are complex factors uh, to tackle if we get into the trustworthy domain. Uh, our goal is to put trustworthy into the 6G network architecture design. Uh, typically, there are two methods uh, to implement trust into network. Uh, the first is a conventional approach, which is a methodological methodology based. Uh, for example, the attestation ne uh, networks. Um, the other approach is a quantitative approach. This is what we are going to uh, to discuss uh, here. Um, it, here we propose a quantitative framework to measure the trust in the network. Uh, our 
work is based on the uh, Yu and Xin's research. Their research on the distributed reputation management. It is uh, further based on the mathematical theory on the evidence of a uh, uh, represent and propagate the rating. Uh, so the basic assumption here is Alice's rating of trust of Bob is based on the direct interaction with Bob for the past history. Or the trust rating is based on the third party testimony here, Alice trust Bob on the Bob is based on the recommendation from Charlie. Uh, in our computation, computing uh, of a trust, uh, uh, we consider two type of uh, trust model, these two types, and that is consider the approach of direct interaction and the recommendation as well. So the trust evaluation or recommendation uh, 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 will, uh, as a recommendation uh, will eventually put on the, uh, the ledger. So uh, we here we propose uh, to construct a six network trust as a as a general framework. Uh, first, to create a measure uh, to the quantity of a calculate the trust value t. And second, is to use six G blockchain to trace the cooperative cooperativeness or defectiveness uh, uh, among all the network elements. That some of, some of the elements are very co cooperative, some of the elements are very de de defectiveness. Uh, the third is to use the distributed ledger table to provide assessment of the trust value T. Last uh, is uh, instead of exchange the Bitcoin or gas, uh, the transaction, uh, in the transaction, we exchange the trust values. So it's a, it's a, as a, as a kind of a, a re, uh, reward system, but how to define the incentive and the reward scheme for the trust, uh, is still an interesting problem. Uh, we, uh, here is a, is a simple computing of a trust uh, in this equation. Uh, the trust value T consists of uh, T subdirect, which is the direct interaction trust value, and the, the T sub uh, indirect, which is the recommendation trust value, and the T penalty, which is the trust uh, penalty of a mistrust. The trust value uh, of a direct interaction and itself composed of two parts, uh, has two parts, the T social and the, the T un, uh, un, uh, so unsocial. The T social measures the degree of activity of a weighted sum of the, all the past uh, trust values of a T. Uh, I should mention here, that in our scheme, the initial state of all the system and the trust value are set to minimal or zero as the system uh, uh, um, dynamic evolves, the trust, the value is accumulated progressing. Uh, therefore, if some hidden element in the network is not active very often, we give them uh, some T unsocial with a low trust value. Uh, in the in this scheme, uh, we assign the reward uh, uh, alpha to the corporation. Uh, we put the penalty beta uh, for the deceiving actions. Uh, we can see uh, the trust value for each individual are varying with time. Our goal is to come up a strategy to maximize the trust value of the entire network. Solving this problem is hard and to find a distributed algorithm 
to optimize this ensemble sum for the trust is uh, very desirable. Uh, this is an ongoing work um, for ourselves. As we mentioned before, trust is a complex factor. So in this chart, uh, we attempt to do some uh, additional modeling on the trust with a consideration of uh, some uh, human factors. Uh, for example, uh, we typically feel that trust is someone doesn't take away anything, although they could. So people feel there is a trust. And the other thing is that trust is someone gives something, although they don't need to give. So people feel assured and, uh, and the trust. Uh, so this effect can be computed as a trust, uh, as a probability, probabilistic expectation of a some a priori knowledge or the expectation of a someone is bigger than a threshold. So for the probability distribution of a tr trust value T, we can compute the cumulative value of a trust T and the compare to a preset threshold. If passing the threshold, so we can assign the penalty. Uh, this is another example. Uh, so we typically feel that trust uh, takes year to build, a second to break, and somehow forever to repair. Uh, this effect can be computed as a weighted trust sequence. Uh, in, in the typical case, we can model this effect as a sigmoid function uh, with a saturation maximum value uh, at one. Uh, then we assign the degree of trust as a value of a mu. Uh, and in the event of uh, trust violation, uh, we can apply a steep penalty value to the uh, trust minimal. After that, uh, we have a long time grow for trust uh, with a different parameter of a penalty row uh, in the sigma function. Uh, uh, so finally, uh, this is the algorithm of a trustworthiness we proposed and the value of a trust of each individual will be uploaded to the ledger and the trust value can be applied as the stake uh, in the Bitcoin as an incentive. So we, we can have uh, something like a proof of a stake as a trust, uh, a proof of a trust in, in our proposal. So another thing, is the mathematical property of this dynamic system is, uh, is for further study. For example, the scalability of this system and the, uh, the stability of the system and the robustness of this system at a very large scale uh, are uh, the important aspect to investigate. Uh, in this talk, uh, we proposed uh, 6G blockchain technology. Uh, we discussed the scalability problem and its a solution. We also present a new algorithm for the 6G blockchain privacy, that is the zero knowledge fabric solution with a minimized uh, overhead and computing uh, for computing and communication. Uh, we also propose a new computational method for evaluate the trust and use this method as a rewarding mechanics in the 6G blockchain. Here, uh, we want to list some uh, more open problems for uh, 6G blockchain. So the first problem is controversial. It is about a modifiable ledger to support a GDPR regulation requirement. For this regulation, it is required at a certain circumstance, the authority is allowed to remove the information for a specific transaction, uh, which uh, is the Nakamoto system uh, cannot fulfill this requirement today. 
uh, is this can be done with consensus based mechanism or uh, the authority enabled mechanism? Uh, the, there is a, a similar issue with the traditional so-called legal inception as a regulation requirement for the uh, telecom business. Uh, so the second problem is the incentive-based trustworthiness. That is how to motivate individual network element to do the work of accumulative trust and the reward, uh, and how to motivate verifier of the ZK fabric to do the verification job and uh, oblivious transfer as a reward. Um, uh, this is a, an open problem because uh, so far the blockchain is only successful in the cryptocurrency uh, that the reward is obvious. Uh, so then the, the next I have many, but then the next one is the design law latency of distributed uh, hash uh, table and the distributed letting, uh, ledger table uh, on the physical channel and the Mac, uh, Mac physical and the Mac layer networking to support a very fast distributed ledger system. Um, fi finally, uh, let me summarize uh, that we present, uh, we talk about uh, the 6G blockchain concept and their technology and, uh, and uh, the, the technology we developed. Uh, we use the uh, synchronized prism algorithm and the sharding algorithm to enable the scalability of a 6G blockchain. Um, and this will be the first time a telecom system could potentially adopt the blockchain. Uh, we propose a zero knowledge based algorithm that is a ZK fabric to enable the privacy of the 6G blockchain. And finally, uh, we provide a novel trustworthy, a new trustworthy computing method uh, for the 6G blockchain. Uh, with that, a, I conclude my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, Dr. Tong. It's like, I appreciate it. Like if it was a real physical audience, there would be a lot of clapping over here. That was a, a wonderful talk, actually, with a, with a lot of, I mean, I have a lot of questions myself as I do work in this area. Uh, but uh, let me start with some uh, with the questions from the audience. Um, so James Mayers has two questions. He says, are there any problems ZK snarks are better suited to solving than ZK fabric? Or are the advantages of uh, ZK fabric evident in all cases? Um, well, the first uh, uh, thing we, what in, in our mind is the, uh, is, the, is the computing and the communication overhead. Uh, that means, you know, uh, fast computing method and the smaller uh, uh, various transform uh, in the network because uh, this is a matters more in order to make it uh, practical for this large scale. Um, ZK Snag, I think uh, if it is on the application level uh, over the top, uh, we are talking about hundreds of millions of that, that even that is, um, I'm not sure is approved, is approved already. Now we're talking about some billions of uh, stuff uh, with that scale. Uh, so uh, we definitely want to simplify and make it more efficient. And in terms of uh, proof, uh, all this thing, uh, other aspect, um, uh, Robson and I had the, had the paper uh, to discuss that. I'm not sure we, we closed all the problem uh, already, but, uh, but apparently uh, it looks better than the ZK snack. Another question for James also is like, how is the creation of new identities slash civil attacks uh, in order to recover from a penalty in the trust system 
are prevented? Uh, and is this compatible with uh, privacy goals? I don't think I understand. <laughs> so James, do you want to uh, elaborate a little bit more? Uh, yeah, so uh, I can just say that um, in your privacy, in your trust system, in your reputation system, there is the penalty metric uh, that is used to, if someone does something bad and then there, it takes longer to recover their, uh, their reputation. Um, but uh, that kind of system is uh, susceptible if someone is able to change their identity um, to a new, a new identity on the chain and then they can start, start fresh without having that penalty be applied to them. I'm just wondering how that is prevented. So I'm not sure it is a, is a, is a, uh, is a, is still, you know, the, the, uh, that we can change the identity even on the current blockchain system or uh, that's what you meant. Uh, therefore, uh, we cannot r apply the right penalty to that guy. That's, yeah, yeah. that's your question. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so I, that, uh, uh, that we can put some, I didn't think about this problem, but uh, I think we can put some limitation things. Um, the first step of all the network element, uh, according to the, like based on the today's business, you need uh, some certificate. So is, uh, is, uh, is in these, these uh, telecom blockchain, if it is applied, it's not wired the West that uh, believe it's a uh, permission based. Uh, so in that case, there, there is a way uh, the true identity will be there uh, so if we want to solve this problem. Great, thank you so much. So I will encourage the audience to ask some questions, but I kept some notes that I would like to uh, in the interim until people pose some questions. Um, first of all, you brought up rightfully so GDPR. So GDPR is uh, it's a remarkable and quite useful uh, type of regulation introduced four years ago that it also requires you know, the user to be able to erase his data from the acquire, right? That's part of GDPR, right? Right. And, you know, now the blockchain has the problem that when you have a blockchain, whether it's permission or permissionless, everybody has your data essentially, right? And, right. and uh, obviously in a permissionless environment, it's more limited. So how do you see a permission environment addressing GB GDPR? Uh, blockchain environment. Right, so that's where uh, it has the, uh, that, that, that is a problem that, uh, you know, where, 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 uh, it's difficult to, to look at it because in the principle of uh, the, oh, the, the classical Nakamoto, Nakamoto stuff is, uh, you know, the wider uh, computing power and the wider spread and, the, and then the system may become a more secure, but if a GDPR somehow, if you look at the European, they limited the country border. So um, the degree of, a sec uh, you know, the security of the blockchain uh, sometimes is questionable. Uh, so this because the pool of the, uh, you know, the computing uh, hardness of the chain of the ledger. Uh, the second is, uh, this is a true trouble. I, I don't have idea yet, but it, it, it's, you know, you sometime a regulatory required to go back to modify the ledger. Um, <laughs> uh, that but is- probably, So let me ask you another question. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but in a permissionless environment, you cannot really modify the ledger, right? Because everybody can join. You don't know who is the validator, the joining, the dropping, the keep the uh, yeah. history. But in permission environment, what? So I don't, I mean, that's more likely a legal question rather than a technical question. But imagine you keep the data encrypted, uh, GDPR will still 
require you to go and delete the data, even if it's encrypted? Yes. Okay. Okay, I was not aware of that. So this presents. Okay, I see. I there, see. there are there are another difficult case. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, because Google, uh, let's say Google as a search engine, so they put everything on the internet on the search engine. So that means if uh, if the news show up, uh, uh, like Bob is arrested. So then there will be a massive news on Bob arrested and you are searching you will, when you hit the Bob, it will, they will be on the, uh, on the top line. So the second day Bob is approving the court that is innocent. Uh, that news may not be show up often. So from the Google, Google search point of view, you will always forever to look at the first news without clean up uh, you know, that stuff for the reputation, for example, uh, this is a hard problem for, even harder problem that when the court of law asks you to remove, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, some, uh, some fake news. Um, I see. Uh, I think this is also a, as well, some uh, new problem for, for, uh, for to potentially for blockchain as well. Okay, I see what, what I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Uh, you spoke about proof of trust. So the proof of trust also most likely will relate to the course of identity somehow. Uh, and, and yeah, yeah. That that we can play uh, if we add some people with some initial or weights with more trust or less trust. That uh, that they can play, but but in the all flat system that nobody has uh, superiority, I don't know how to do that. But but all I interest is to make a algorithm uh, to naturally com uh, compute the behavior, so we can infer uh, you know the, is is the trust or not the, of this guy. Um, that's where you know all this. Um, all this uh, uh, thing that was we were trying to do, but it turned out it's a simple uh, algorithm. But the, the system is uh, is uh, is is uh, uh, some kind of a nested um, Markovian stuff at large scale. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. So the property, uh, you know, the fun foundation of this system is not clear. You know, is uh, is it stable? Uh, is it a not robust enough or some other states could be very strange. So these are the interesting problems. But it's a, it's a natural progression of the system that can assign some trust value for certain people. But how to incent, uh, like if you Became more trust. You have some advantage in the in the in the network. I that that is. Um, uh, or why why I should do you know uh, uh, and, and uh, as a very uh, uh, ZK fabric or ZK snack as well. Yeah. So my other question is like why you introduced proof of work in a permission because you had proof of work also as one of the elements. Why proof of work in a permission system? Um, yeah, so that one actually is a bit redundant, uh, I would admit, yeah. Yeah, okay. Probably we don't need it, you guys, since you are in the club, that's that's all. Since yeah. you're in the club, like burning power for no reason, yeah. <laughs> and, and my yeah. very last question is, uh, because you spoke about the um, you uh, circuit architecture for the ZK fabric, yeah. So basically, the ZK fabric is gonna be a cheaper way to do. It's a cheaper way, yes. Yeah, to do. I understood that, and what you're also saying is like you don't want to involve the verifier with the approver. I understand that because you want to keep things anonymous. Yeah. So basically, but you do want to design a chip uh, that is gonna be doing. It will be a hardware accelerator for that, essentially, right? if it is possible and then yeah. uh, and basically robson made it all 
uh, on the polling gates level. Yeah, uh, but my question to you is the following. So you want basically this, this chip to be in every device. It's got yeah. to be, be like a small... I, I don't have that problem with that, you know, pro uh, I don't have an assessment, but it uh, seems like uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, 10 billion transistor now in the, in, the, in the cell phone chip. But the problem is, uh, so what bothers me is, or uh, whole thing is the incentive. Why, why uh, you know, <laughs> they are in the network, they want to do this, because this is a, this is a some fundamental for the blockchain for the for the money. Yes, uh, people has a motivation. Okay, I see. I see. One thing, and I also asked uh, uh, Mr. San. It would be. Would you mind if you share your slides with us? Some people asked. I don't know if. Oh sure, yeah, sure. No problem. I have another I, or, question. Yeah, I'll send to you. Yeah. Okay, that's excellent. Uh, <clears throat> I have another question from uh, Panayotis Mikhanopoulos. He's asking, is the trust system going to be implemented across 60 networks or only for certain important pieces of it? Like, do you see that? Like, do you see, because you have like a, a long experience and long experience of how things progress, but do you think for every little thing we're gonna be having this trust system? Or is that the system over specific classes of problems? Yeah, so in the telecom business, uh, so what do we need to do <coughs> when, when we have a technology, we have to make it a standards so that everybody can interoperate together, different vendor, different operator. So that's a typical exercise. So then in that discussion, we will see is uh, is it everywhere or some of the part of uh, boxes we do this or some of the protocol portion we do this or it's over the top. So that's a very complex discussion. However, we have another 10 years to get 6G. So I will encourage a lot of, uh, you know, people have a research effort to, to clean this up. Uh, so, in, so, so that we can use this technology, uh, uh, you know, to make a security trust and uh, all this uh, privacy uh, by uh, good technology rather than, you know, uh, some uh, political regulation. And, uh, okay, so that so was another... I mean, yeah. there's another question in the in the chat, but uh, you you raised the word political. Uh, I mean, we all read the news and we live in a world of propaganda. Uh, mm -hmm. We hear what we hear about Huawei from American media, but according to my records, it was the Facebook that was monitoring everybody and the NSA. There's no evidence for Huawei, right? Uh, so for standardization to come across, uh, many different partners, especially in an interconnected world, yeah. many different partners need to come together into agreement. Yes. And what we see over here in the presentation today, and it was a very joyful thing to hear, we see, we saw a lot of talk about privacy of individual, right? Um, about protection of individual. Yes. Um, and, and that's a very wonderful thing to hear, but what, what is the trend of what's happening from other big players, you know, whether they're in Europe, Korea, yeah. States, yeah. I mean, because you participate in a lot of groups, it would be very interesting for us to hear what's trending, you know? It's yeah, very so, so uh, uh, yes, so I think we have a good foundation for the current industry. Uh, for example, internet is universal, it's a global, it's the same technology. Uh, wireless in the 5G, yes, it's a global unified standards. That means if, uh, anywhere it, it, it follows the same, uh, same, 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 almost same algorithm. So if a 6G continue to this path, uh, once we have a good tech sound and a good technology, that, that has a lot of work. Um, but then that will, I think that will be pretty well, um, rather than, you know, 
goes through some other. Uh, so the superior technology, that's what I believe will, will help us to maneuver this thing. I see. And a very last question from Baon Wu. He says, is it possible to use proof of trust instead of uh, proof of work or proof of stake in the 6G era? So what I assume he's asking is that if the 6G with all this data is going to allow, you know, let me put it this way, that you go to the bank today and uh, because the teller knows your face, because you go there every other month or every other week, they don't even ask you your ID, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might say it's illegal because if money disappears, you know, but there is a proof of trust the way that humanity has worked for the right. last thousand years, right? Right, right. Uh, so do you envision, uh, that's an interesting question actually, do we envision eventually uh, the proof of trust to come to this level of genuine value that it will replace proof of work because it's <laughs> very wasteful and proof of stake because proof of stake the money calls the shots over there again right <laughs> well if you if you equivalent the trust as a as the money in the bitcoin system that's a, that's not a bad thing you work more you get more reward yeah but but the proof of stake is always so do you, do you foresee the proof of trust reaching that level through 6G? Oh, no, no. Oh, okay, so for telecom, for 5G, it's a, uh, it's a it's blank sheet for nothing in, in uh, blockchain is there. So blockchain is over the top. So, but, but that's what we want to make awareness and the step of a technology for the next couple of years so that people feel we need use this technology. And then how to design this, I, I, I think there are many good ways or better ways than this. So okay. like, yeah, so today is just, uh, uh, you know, just a, a first of a flavor <laughs> what it can be done. Okay, very last question that we got in the chat. Is there a provision in the trust system for the trust value to decay with time or the only way for trust to decrease is through penalization. So if I hear this question correctly, what it asks is like, do you think that a trust system, like, I mean, I, I became yeah. trustworthy. Do you think I yeah. need to keep proving that I'm trustworthy with time or only when I do bad things, I lose my trust, my trust yeah. score? Okay, yeah, this is an interesting uh, question. Uh, uh, we try to put this in, but there, so there is an active unsocial factor. So if you do not, if, like if you idle, you're hidden, you're isolated for a long time, that people feel you are remote, less interactive, that potentially untrustable i don't know this is a probably some some kind of a human factor but uh, but yeah. it can mod it can model there okay thank you so any other questions thank you so very much that was a very interesting talk um and i can say it was a talk that raises a lot of open questions um it's also a talk that shows that uh, what Nakamoto did like 12 years ago, people didn't take it seriously at that time, but today it's bringing humanity to uh, a new level and a new direction, right? And of how we view trust. And, and uh, it's, it's, it, was, it was one of those talks that it touched on many angles of technology, social science, political science, and even philosophy and also hardware. That was really nice to see some hardware because I, I also did a lot of hardware. That's the time that I used to talk to Nortel. I was designing chips actually uh, in my previous life. That was my work. Thank you so very much for being uh, here today and give us this kind of insight.